Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons because I always talk about Dungeons and Dragons. I also like cookies, I just can't eat them anymore. I do feel very sad about that sometimes. Okay, so the topic for today is clever uses of candles or the candle in your Dungeons and Dragons 5e game. It doesn't actually have to be your 5e game. It could be any version of Dungeons and Dragons. So what can you use your simple candle for in your Dungeons and Dragons game. Well, I have a selection of options for you today. Starting off with number one, you can use it as a small light source. That's right, a small, light, cheap light source, easy to store. You can even make yourself a very stylish, uh, is it candle helmet or helmet candle? I don't know, it's one of those. It's basically a candle on top of a hand, um, helmet. It's not hard to do, it's very simple. And of course, Something like a candle is perfect for those midnight strolls at night when the call of the wild comes across you and you need to go to the long drop and do your business. Make sure you have a candle. You do not want to be stepping into something you don't shouldn't be stepping into. Okay, so number two, you can use a candle as a timer for a trap that essentially will burn through a rope or string, releasing it and then causing some sort of horrific damage to your enemy or whoever decides to step into the trap. Might not necessarily be um, the enemy, it might be just one of your player characters sleepwalking, but uh, that's their problem, they should have chained themselves down. Okay, number three. You can use it in a spell ritual, although religious and spiritual rituals are also a, a definite possibility. That candle's always useful for that. And of course, if it makes sort of like a, has a nice scent to it, has some strange smoke coming off it, purple smoke is always very popular, you can use it for that as well. Let's not forget that uh, with Dungeons & Dragons, we have spells. That means that uh, often the candle is a spell material component, something vital that you need. But usually there's no requirement to actually spend money. So if you have a spell focus or some sort of um, spell component pouch, you shouldn't have too much of an issue with that sort of thing anyway. Okay, number five is something like a scented candle. Yes, I know that scented candles are not standard candles. Yes, you may have to sp spend a little bit more. I, I don't know what the, the going rate is for a scented candle in Dungeons and Dragons. So if you're run wanting me to tell you what sort of uh, price range you should put it in and what sort of scented candles there are, you're the dungeon master, sort it out. Um, so, scented candles can be used to remove the putrid smell from some sort of monster or smelly rubbish. Unless, of course, you like sniffing rubbish, then, of course, you won't need to use a scented candle. Uh, number six, you can rub that candle wax on cloth, rope, and twine to make it waterproof. I think the idea of making your clothing waterproof with wax may or may not work. Of course, um, ducks are pretty much waterproof, and you could simply put a duck on your head. Um, that'll only keep your head head dry. Let's move on. Um, this is the, the plus one, number seven. Number seven is the romantic uh, candle. Now it could be scented, could be unscented, doesn't really matter, but a candle lit dinner with that vital non-player character that uh, you need to sort of subdue or s seduce to get vital information or just steal their stuff. Also, there's also the opportunity to uh, make that barmaid that uh, didn't really like your advances jealous uh, after they spilt your drink and your food all over your lap. Um, yes. Number eight, you can dip the candle wick into poison. Yeah, I know this sounds kind of bad, doesn't it? Into poison so that when it is lit, it will indirectly poison your enemy or other people by inhaling the fumes. And as we know, toxic fumes never hurt anybody. Well, actually, kind of know they do. Uh, number nine, you can use a candle to detect a small breeze coming through the crack of a secret door or passage. And then, of course, once you know where all the secret doors and passages are in that castle or that uh, dungeon, you can then open up a tourist business showing people around. Or find the, uh, the lost priest who uh, wandered too far in their, uh, the church or chapel and got uh, uh, got lost behind some sort of secret door. Okay, number 10. Uh, candles can be used to start a larger, bigger fire. Surprise. So if your um, tyrannical villain has a castle and you want to reduce it to cinders, a candle will certainly help in that process. Uh, 
So make sure you have one run around because who doesn't want to burn down a castle? Okay, number 11 is you can rub wax on a bowstring to keep it from fraying. Honestly, I had no idea this was actually a thing, but apparently it is. I'm assuming that uh, back in the medieval, medieval times when people used long bows and short bows, they didn't go down to the local blacksmith and ask for long bow or bowstring wax. I suspect they only just grabbed a stick, a candlestick, and just rubbed it on their string. Unless, of course, I'm wrong. I'm not exactly a historian or anything like that. Okay, number 12 is you can make wax impressions of wool carvings. Of course, this wool carving, if you're making an impression of this thing, I think you're quite sick. Uh, next, we got uh, the handy dandy wax in liquid form. is really good for sealing up a crack. And as we know, uh, even in the real world, including our Dungeons and Dragons world, uh, cow farting is the greatest threat to uh, the existence of all mankind and all of the other races. So seal up that cow butt and, uh, and we can uh, save ourselves from the fumes that come from there. Okay, so if you are wanting to sort of use it in a more traditional manner, you can use sealing wax but also candle wax to cover a piece of cloth and then use that to block your ears so you can't hear the sirens or the mermaids or whatever you want to call them uh, as they're perched on a rock near a coastal line uh, lulling you towards their sharp jagged rocks crashing your ship into it and then drowning of course it can also be used uh, sealing wax and cloth for blocking up your ears to stop that player character who has a character that snores there's still hope for you after this and of course I did another video not so long ago so you could melt down all the candle wax into blocks of wax and use it for applications in my video on sealing wax man did I plug my own video yes I did so I'm hoping this was somewhat useful to you if you are playing Dungeons and Dragons and wanted some uh, uses for your candle I have covered pretty much all the different ideas I had and the Dungeons and Dragons community provided to me and I have to say thank you for everybody on Facebook and for everybody who provided additional information from my home group yes that's right Simon I do notice your comments as well thank you very much now if you found this useful as it happens I have a whole series of videos on how to use Dungeons and Dragons adventuring gear in your game if you wanted to go and check that out. I also have hundreds of videos for players and dungeon masters covering pretty much every topic you can imagine. Now if you want to support the channel so I keep doing stuff like this you can do so by checking out my Patreon page. I have affiliate links down in the description to the book depository on Amazon. I also have merchandise shelf underneath all of my videos as well. Make sure to share, like and subscribe, hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos, blah 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 blah. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.